What you got there, babe? A geocache called Famously Found. We are here with the RV Motorhome Hall of Fame. This is also our first geocache in Indiana. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so we're gonna do what we do and get back to the video. Welcome to the RVMH Hall of Fame, along with the library and museum here in Elkhart, Indiana. Now, before we begin, we just want to say that the MH in their name does not stand for motorhome. It stands for manufactured housing. And this all began back in 1972 when the RVMH Heritage Foundation was founded. The museum first opened in 1991, and then it was moved to this location in 2007. Now, as we pan up, you can see the 2017 Hall of Fame inductees. Of course, you really can't have a Hall of Fame without inductees, and that's what you're looking at, a sampling of the people who were inducted throughout the years. This played a vital role in developing the RV and manufacturing housing industry into what it's become today. Hey, hun, do you think we'll ever get inducted for our YouTube channel? <laughs> I don't think the RV Hall of Fame is going to care about our little YouTube channel. No. <laughs> this is the library. Anything you ever want to know or read, about the motorhome industry. Yeah, if it's not here, it probably doesn't exist anymore. This is a big library. Yeah. Just a little bit of history before we step into our time machine. RV historians say 1910 was the birth of RVing here in America, because that's when the first motorized campers were built. Come on, let's go RVing. Cheryl and I are going to take you on a tour of an RV manufacturing plant now. On a 124th scale size though. <laughs> it's little. <laughs> Starting at station one, that's where they put the axles and the tires onto the frame. Then it moves up to station two where they put the floor on. And then in the next station they're installing the carpet in the linoleum. Look at the little toilets behind it. <laughs> Those are funny. <laughs> and then the next station is where they install the cabinets. You can see all the little parts behind it. We could use some parts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that size though. <laughs> and the next one has the walls. And look, there's a whole bunch of walls behind them. The next thing they do is they seal up the roof. Once the roofing is on, they run the electrical. Then on top of that, they put the insulation and then the final roof decking. And then in this model, they're showing a rubber roof install. They're also adding the vents and the air conditioning. Oh, see them in the background? <laughs> All right, moving across to the other side of the factory now. This is where the windows will be installed. And then the slide outs. Moving on, they put in the doors and the drawers. And then the next one is the appliances. I like the appliances. <laughs> we have the tiny. <laughs> and then moving on to the furniture. Hey, check out the mattresses in the back and, the, and look at the awnings. Those are cool. That is cool. <laughs> and off to the final finish. And then they get delivered to your local dealers. Hey, tell them Chuck and Cheryl sent you. <laughs> I don't think that'll help. The first stop with our time machine brings us back 105 years to this 1913 Model T. And check this thing out. And it is pulling the oldest RV in the world, a 1913 Earl Travel Trailer. Now, this was custom built for a university professor by a Los Angeles carriage maker to be used as a home out on field trips. Now, the dining area in the front will seat four and there is storage underneath those benches. The benches will also convert over to a bed. As we come back out, there is also storage in the back. The left-hand side would be the wardrobe and the right-hand side would be the kitchen area. We are looking at a 1916 telescoping apartment. Not only does the back telescope out, get it? But the sides push out too. Yep, this RV has slides. The kitchen's on the left and the wardrobe is on the right. I mean, this is pretty cool. And it is mounted on a 1915 Model T. Now, when the Model T came out, it was an affordable vehicle for a lot of people, so it fit right into the RV living style of the day. Oh, and in case you're wondering what the T means, it's just a letter that comes after S. When Henry Ford began building cars, he started with Model A and just worked his way up the alphabet. 1916 pop-up. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I guess weight wasn't much of a concern. Look at the thickness of the floor. Look, you set bunks up underneath it. 
Our next stop in time is 1929. That's when the covered wagon here, not the one that horses used to pull. No, no. <laughs> it became the first production travel trailer in the United States. In the company, same name, covered wagon, became the largest trailer manufacturing company during the 1930s. Fast forward six years, and this is what the covered wagon travel trailer looked like. Yeah, by 1935, the company was doing so well, they were actually producing one out of every six house trailers that were built in the United States. Wow. Unfortunately, the company went out of existence with World War II. Aww. You can see how the exterior changed, too. That is genuine leatherette over a thin plywood shell, and the roof is covered with a coated canvas stretched over tar paper. Let's stay with travel trailers, but move up to 1954 and check out this Yellowstone travel trailer. Now, this would have been a higher priced one because it had a residential refrigerator. <laughs> Talk about history repeating itself, huh? The kitchen range was also residential, and it had a back door that was intended to be used as a fire escape. I just made a fresh bunch. Come on. Ooh, we did good. Oh. Smell great. <laughs> I'll keep them warm on the heater till you want one. This is a 1957 10 foot teardrop trailer. I don't think so. <laughs> you don't want one of these? Oh, come on, honey. Nice and cozy. We could me, snuggle. Me, you and Brandy. <laughs> You'd be happy as a lark. Mm. It's like a creep. <laughs> no kidding. Cooking area. There's signs saying how old this furniture is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's pretty comfortable. <laughs> And this is the bridge that will take us from travel trailer land to motorhome land. Stepping into 1931, we find this Chevrolet house car. Now what a house car was, well, it was a predecessor to today's motorhomes. This particular one though was not set up as a camper unit. It was designed to be a chauffeur driven lounge because the owner of this one was famous. She went by the name of Mae West. Ever hear of her, hun? Mm, I'll have to look her up. Yeah, 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 Google it. <laughs> but she was given this house car by Paramount Studios, who was trying to entice her to come make movies with them. It was used for several years to transport Miss West from her home or her hotel to the various shooting locations. Now the story goes on to say that this back porch, she had a rocking chair put on it where she could enjoy the breezes and wave to her fans. We are here at 1933, and this is a Ford camp car. A camp car is a self-contained automobile that has a tent or an awning. And here is the inside. That's a pretty unique looking motorhome. Check out the shape of it. If it had wings, it could pass for a plane. It's a 1937 Hunt house car named Star. Let's go check it out. Shifting must have been a royal pain. No, look what a shifter it looks like. Yeah, no kidding. It's behind you. Welcome to 1967. This is a 19-foot Winnebago motorhome. It could sleep up to six people on three double beds. Priced right around $5,000. I find the dash a little bit boring. Could be me. I just find it a little bit boring. No GPS. <laughs> no backup camera. Well, Pretty look at the engine. Doghouse? Oh, yeah, the engine doghouse is huge. This is pretty innovative, though, because they, they have the bunk over. That's one of the double beds. Like all dinettes, this would become a double bed. Mm-hmm. And another one in the back. Oh, so bunk beds. You can get some serious people in here. Six in this space. It's... Yeah, you're right, it certainly is dark in here. I also gotta tell you, 
when Fleetwood brought the pace arrow back, it didn't look like this at all. <laughs> the time machine has dropped us off at 1974, right in front of this GMC motorhome. From 1973 to 1978, General Motors Corporation actually built their own motorhomes. Now these motorhomes, they were front wheel drive. Yep, that's it, I said front wheel drive. Plus they also had airbag suspension systems. Oh, and did I mention the tag axle? Hun, is that an 8-track tape with Herb Elvett and the Tijuana Brass? Who's that? Google it. <laughs> anyway, this also came with a 455 cubic inch engine. <laughs> yeah, more power. <laughs> Hello, 1988. Here we have a Star Street 2. It is one of two built using a Cadillac chassis and an Oldsmobile 455 cubic inch engine. The cool thing was it was built to fit into a normal house garage. Well, that's as long as it was at least 22 and a half feet deep. It could almost be a limo. <laughs> <laughs> like a party bus. <laughs> I would seriously bump my head trying to drive this. I don't want to tell you that. Kidding. Very low ceilings. Yeah, give the guy credit. Yeah. He definitely made it a unique one. Okay. Welcome to 2016. I'd have to say that the Winnebago has certainly changed over the years, wouldn't you? I love the floor. Mm. But I hate the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably why they put it in here. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm thinking? We're kind of getting low on gas in the time machine. We should probably end it here. <laughs> Plus the video is going to get too long. Yeah, extremely long. Um, we should show them the manufactured home on the outside, though, and then call it a day. Yes, let's do it. All right, guys, let's go. One of the last exhibits we'll be showing you today. This has more square footage in it than our house does. I thought our house was pretty big. Yeah, 1,700 square feet. Wow. All right, I'm impressed. This is nice. Check out the arched doorways. In my lovely wife's shop. It's got a, it, it's huge. Wow. It's beautiful. This is something else. She said these go for about seventy, eighty thousand dollars And my favorite part? Oh, I'll, look at all the counter space. <laughs> wow, this is nice. Wow. Well, if we ever want to plant our feet firmly on the ground, this is a consideration. Yeah, because I wouldn't pull this behind us. <laughs> Show there's laws. <laughs> The master bedroom. Please stay off the bed. Oh, walk-in closet. This must be the bath. Wow. It's as big as one of our rooms in our house. Holy moly, check this out. I don't know, we may be looking wrong, hon. We <laughs> should probably consider one of these. No kidding. Huh. Hi. <laughs> this is Elsie. And her lover, Elmer. <laughs> and you are? I'm your husband. <laughs> what do you think that's called, hon? A mobile elk. A mobile elk? <laughs> all right, there you go. The RV Motorhome Hall of Fame. This place was great. If you can camp at all, especially in an RV, put this on your must-do list. It doesn't take that long to go through. You can see where the RV industry started and where it has come to today. <laughs> we really had a good time here. Yes, we did. So. If you liked what you saw, we'd appreciate the thumbs up. And as usual, if you haven't subscribed, it's right there. I'm just leaving it alone, okay? <laughs> so feel free to comment and share this video. Because until our next video, the end.